let's start with some basic questions. Is 2023 a good time to buy stock? Yeah, so that that's a great question. And of course, we get that question every day. And, and my answer is always the same. It's always a good time to buy something, right? Um, but it's it's all relative to so many things, right? Um, when people come to us, uh, um, you know, asking us you know, what to invest in. I think we'll talk about that in general. We'll talk about investments in general. Um, but uh, it, it so much depends, Paul, on, um, you know, on the age of the person, on their, and it's not just their, you know, the risk tolerance is kind of what the industry uses, right? Their, their, their willingness or their ability to survive a loss. Um, but there's so many other factors involved with it. But the short answer is, yeah, it, it's a good time. It's just, you know, right now, uh, if you look at the news, there's a lot of volatility, and that means that things are going up and down. And so you got to be a little more picky what you're buying, right? As opposed to buying the whole market, like the S&P 500 or the Dow Jones Industrials. That makes sense? For sure. Yeah, it's been very volatile. And, and today's date is December 16th, yeah. 2022. Almost the end of the yeah. year. Crazy. Exactly. What about bonds? Is now a good time to buy bonds? Coming well, into same, 2023. Same thing, and I and I hope we have some time to talk about bonds in general. But you know, bonds are not all one thing either, right? They're bonds that are um, uh, that are very short duration and have very low risk. And currently, with the current interest rate environment, they're paying pretty high interest rates as well, right? And then you know, if you go out, uh, 30 year bonds, there's those are quite risky because of the time involved. And then you also have bonds that are corporate or, or uh, money loaned to cities, and then you got to worry about the credit risk as well. So the, the answer again is yes, but you got to be picky, right? Can't just right. can't just go through the grocery store and shove everything off the shelf in your cart. You gotta you gotta pick and choose what you're buying. We'll get into some of those specifics um, in a moment here, sure. um, but next let's talk about. How do you recommend a beginner investor start investing in stocks and bonds? What's okay. just someone that's, you know, 18 to 20 years old or any age, really? How do they get started? Yeah. So um, keep it simple. That's the first thing. Right. And um, I think this is a, a good uh, time to bring up this uh, uh, principle I call the uh, perfect investment. Right. Uh, you know, what is the perfect investment? You know, what should I invest in? And I, I have a, uh, a really good description. Now think about this for a moment. This investment would be 100% safe, so you'd never lose a penny, right? It'd be 100% liquid, so anytime you wanted to get your hands on it, you could do it without paying any fees or penalties or restrictions, whatever. So 100% safe, 100% liquid, and the perfect investment would be getting you know unlimited rate of return. So let's just say 100% rate of return, and all those returns would be 100% tax-free, and to boot, it'd be 100% passive, meaning you don't have to do a darn thing to get it, right? So if you think about it, wouldn't that be the perfect investment? 100% safe, 100% liquid, 100% returns that are 100% tax-free, and you don't have to do nothing, right? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> right, so, so the point is, and you know, I can see by the smile on your face, and anybody listening to this would say the same thing, there is no perfect investment, right? And so you, you have to know that whenever you're making any investment, you have to be willing to compromise something to um to get what you want right so maybe i'm willing to compromise some liquidity to get more safety or, or i'm willing to compromise safety to get higher rates of return but i always got to be willing to give up something um to get to get what i want so your question was to begin is if i'm a beginner how do i get started and i'm talking i'm just thinking in my mind when i'm hearing that question i'm thinking you know like somebody who's a, a child or maybe you know the parents want to start a, a roth ira for uh, they're five or six year old, or they just want to do a you know investment account, whatever. The easiest way to get in is uh, uh, you know you can either uh, get into the securities world or get into the uh, bond world. And, and I know you want to ask me more questions, but let me jump off on this one too. So yeah, another, another yeah another principle I talk about is there's only three things that you can do with your money. Period. Right? You can spend them. You can lend it or you can invest it. So you can spend it, lend it, or investment, right? So everybody knows what spending is, and we won't get into the nuances of that, but there are some financial implications besides just, you know, your money's gone. Um, but lending it is, uh, you know, people don't think about it, but when you buy a bond, you're actually lending money to somebody or something, right? You can lend, you buy yeah. a corporate bond. Um, you know, the, the financial and services industry is very good at coming up with these euphemisms that make people very feel very positive about doing something, 
right? And buying is a real positive action, you know, buying, right? So if you went, if I was a uh, corporation and I wanted you to lend you money, you'd lend me money. Well, you might be reticent to do that, but if you want to buy my bonds, that, that's a pretty positive thing, right? But you're in, in fact, lending money to the corporation. Um, and another even more com um, uh, common example would be you go to your local bank and you put money in the checking account, right? Well, what are you doing? You're lending money to the bank, right? And, and of course, uh, on a checking account, they're paying you 0% interest. Right. And um, but you're still nonetheless, you've loaned money to the bank um, yeah, in exchange for having the ability to, you know, to write checks from that money um, in the future. So so getting back to the, um, you know, the, the simple investment, you could buy bonds today. Uh, right. And we're talking about December 16th, 2022. You can get like a uh, three month treasury bond that's going to pay a three percent interest rate. Right now, the reason I'm pointing that out, let's go back to my, you know, my five qualities, the perfect investment, 100 percent safe, 100 percent liquid so on and so forth. So is a bond um, you're loaning money to the federal government of the United States, biggest you know, country in the world. Right. Um, so is it safe? Of course it is. Right. Um, is it liquid? Well, sort of. I mean, it's tied up for three months. I mean, three months goes by like that, right? So let's just say, right. yeah, it's, it's almost perfectly liquid. It's not like I could buy it today and 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 you know and get my money out tomorrow. But three months, um, the rate of return, you know, it's not a hundred percent, but it's three percent. And after the last ten years of watching zero percent interest rates, three percent looks pretty darn good, right? Um, and uh, it's it is risk free and it's passive, right? I don't have to do a thing. I just have to buy the bond. I'm going to get paid three percent interest. And I uh, just got to hold it for three months. So that might be a good option, right? Um, alternatively, yeah. if, if they wanted to uh, invest in securities, um, again, small amount of money, young person, you know, just invest in the broad market like the S&P 500 through an ETF, exchange traded fund. Um, why? Because you're getting the, you get to own a small piece of 500 of the largest companies on the planet and uh, cost you nothing, basically nothing to do it. So going back to those qualities of investment, is it safe? No. You know the, the stock market goes up and down is it liquid yes i can i can buy it this morning and sell it this afternoon and there's really no fees for doing that um are the returns good they are over time again we talked about you know getting started over time yeah they're going to get long pretty term. good long quick period of time right right um uh, as a tax-free depends on what, how you own it if you own it inside of a roth yeah if you don't no uh but is it passive yeah because you just buy the broad market so Again, going back to what I said five yeah. minutes ago, keep it simple, right? And then if you just follow those five different qualities to understand what you're going to get, and what you're going to give up, that would that's the way I'd look at it. Sounds great. So just a, a little summary for someone that's just getting started, um, buy an ETF, a, a ETF that focuses on like hundreds of hundreds of different stocks from the S&P 500. So an ETF low cost ETF that covers your stock investments. And then on the other side, you recommend uh, possibly short term bonds where people can buy these bonds directly. And that's at Treasury Direct, right? Treasury Direct is the website to do that. Yeah, yeah, but they actually have ETFs that that simul simulate the uh, bonds. So you don't even need to go to the hassle of buying the bond directly if you don't want to. You can just buy the ETF that that emulates the uh, the three year three month Treasury bond and get the same thing with low cost and no hassle. So so and you know we didn't talk about that at the beginning of the, the the recording of the show, Paul. But obviously we're not giving any specific investment advice to anybody. We're not telling anybody. We're just doing general general thoughts and ideas here and. Um, Again, your question was, how do you get started? And I said, well, keep it simple. That's the, that's the bottom line, keep it simple. And, and so we just talked about two really simple ways to make some pretty decent investments, um, either invest in the S&P 500 through an ETF, or maybe invest in the three month treasury bill through uh, an ETF as well. Okay. So if you don't know Randy Lukey, he's, um, he's well known. Um, I'll give you some of his credentials. He's a registered financial consultant and an independent fiduciary investment advisor with over 35 years of experience. Now, just for those of you who don't know, there's a very small percentage of financial advisors that are actually called independent fiduciary advisors. 
So of approximately 308,000 advisors in total in the United States, only 1% of them are independent fiduciary advisors, and Randy's amongst that 1%. So that's a pretty good credential right there. How I even came in contact with Randy was um, like four or five years ago, it's been, mm -hmm. I read his best-selling financial book. It's called The Business Owner's Guide to Financial Freedom, What Wall Street Isn't Telling You. 